Want to speak real Spanish from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at SpanishPod101.com. Hola, soy Brenda Romaniello, tu profesora de español. Hello and welcome to another Spanish class. Today we're going to have a look at the pronunciation of consonants in Spanish. And specifically today we're going to be comparing uh, the English language and the Spanish language uh, because that, uh, and we are going to talk about the most distinctive uh, consonants, the ones that are different, yes, and they're usually the ones that cause a little bit of problem for English speakers, for example, uh, when they speak Spanish because they are different and we pronounce them differently in Spanish. All the consonants basically are pretty much the same. We use them and we say exactly the same in English and in Spanish but we are going to have a look at some that are actually different in Spanish. We're going to start with B and B. B and B. Can you see here? So it doesn't matter if it is a B or a V, yeah, how we say it in, in English. In Spanish, it will always be either B, <laughs> will always be with a soft V, a soft B. Okay, so we don't differentiate in Spanish between B and V. Okay, let's have a look at some examples. Repeat after me. Bueno. Bueno. Barato. Barato. Vela. Vela. Viernes. Viernes. So I don't know if you have noticed, but uh, when Spanish speakers uh, speak English, that's why we say sometimes very good, very, very good. <laughs> because in Spanish, we don't have very, we don't use the V as that, like that. We don't pronounce the V like that. The next one is se, se. So this is the C in Spanish. So the C will have a different sound in Spanish depending on which vowel we have after the C. So for C-A-C-O-C-U in Spanish, the C is going to turn into a K sound. Yes, so we're gonna say ca-co-cu. Repite. Ca-co-cu. Por ejemplo, casa, como, cual, Okay, and if we have a CE or CI, we are going to say, uh, we are going to pronounce the C with an S sound. With an S sound. Por ejemplo, cerca, cielo. Cerca, cielo. So remember, we're going to say ca, co, cu, se, si. And be careful if you are Italian or if you know a little bit of Italian, sometimes you, send, you tend to say cechi because that's how they, they pronounce it in, in, in Italian. So cochina, sometimes you tend to say cochina or things like that for cocina. Uh, we don't say like that. It's always se, um, like an S sound for se and si, cocina. The next one is cu, cu. So I know that we always say that we pronounce absolutely every letter in Spanish, but there is an exception. Uh, for example, when we have Q, U, E or Q, U, I in Spanish, it's not gonna, we're not going to pronounce the U in between. It's not going to be Cue, Cui. That's a mistake. Cue, Cui. We say instead Que, Qui. Que, Qui. Por ejemplo, repite después de mí. Repeat after me. Queso. Queso, quien, quien. It's incorrect to say queso and quien. <laughs> we have to say queso, quien. The next one is je, je. So first I'm telling you what is the, 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 the letter, how we say the letter in Spanish. Je is G, but we're going to have different pronunciations depending on, again, what vowel follows this letter. So, for example, if we have G A G O G U, we're going to say the G sound. Yes, G. For example, ga go gu, ga go gu. Por ejemplo, gato, 
gato, golf, golf, mucho gusto, gusto. See, so here is a g sound. But if we have GE or GI, then it's going to be like a soft H, yes? And it, actually in Spain and certain parts of, of Latin America, in certain countries, the H is a lot stronger than other countries, yes? So in this case, it will be GI, GE, uh, G -E would be G, he, 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 he. But in Spain, it's really strong. It's actually something like he, 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 he. Um, uh, but remember, yes, yeah? so if we have GE or GI, it's going to be G, he. Por ejemplo, gente, gente, gimnasio, gimnasio. And the other difference is if we have the G, U, E and G, U, I, exactly the same as we were talking about the Q, U, E and Q, U, I, we're not going to pronounce that U in between. We're going to say G, G. Yeah? So this is so that we know how to pronounce, how to say G, G in Spanish, because we know how to say Ga, Go, Gu, but then how do you say G, G if you say G, I and G, E is G, G. Well, you put a U in between, and that's how we say ge, gi. Remember, it's not going to be gue, gui. So we are going to say, por ejemplo, guerra, guerra, guitarra, guitarra. The next one is la J. La J. That's how we say J in Spanish. J. La J. So la J, it always has the very strong H sound. It's a, it's a little bit stronger than the H in Spanish. That's why I think Spanish speakers, when we speak English, we say house and how are you, no? <laughs> because for us, the H is very strong. It's a lot stronger. There's a, a lot more um, air going through your throat when, when you say a G-I-G-E and a, and a J, no, a J. So all the Jotas, all the vowels after a J will be uh, with a H sound. Por ejemplo, Japón, Japón. The next one is la H, the H. So I'm not sure if you have noticed this, but in Spanish, the H, basically we write it in some words, but it's never pronounced. The H in Spanish is silent. So. Be careful with this one because if you are an English uh, speaker, you tend to like pronounce it as a house or how are you and um, with a H sound. In Spanish, pretend is not there, okay? So we don't say hola, we say hola. We don't say hermano, we say hermano, okay? And sometimes it could be in the middle of a word. Por ejemplo, zanahoria for carrot, zanahoria. So you can see it's in the middle of the word, but it's like it doesn't exist. So we only have to write it in Spanish. The only exception is, of course, if we have a CH, CH, CH. So if you have the C and the H together, it's the same as in English, it has a CH sound. Ch. Por ejemplo, repeat after me, Chao, Chao, China. China. In this case, it will affect the, the pronunciation of a CH. You need to pronounce the H after a C. The next one is the doble L. See, doble L, double L. Doble L. There are many different ways to pronounce the double L in Spanish, yes, um, and there are different ways depending on what country uh, you are, but mostly um, for example, where I'm from in Argentina, we have what we call Jismo, yes, which is basically to pronounce the double L and the Y exactly the same. And it's something like depending and actually within Argentina, there are many different um, accents, yes, within one, one single country. And for example, in Buenos Aires, where you have the porteño accent, it's more of a sh sound. So we are going to say me llamo. Yes, me llamo for I am cold, me llamo or lluvia, see, ¿sí? lluvia. Uh, but where I'm from, from Cordoba, we have more of a, 
um, a softer uh, G, J, like that, and we say Juvia, Juvia, or Me llamo, Me llamo. But it depends in, in what country, in which Spanish country you are in, how they will pronounce the double L. So which variation should you choose? Well, it depends on your preference. Uh, for example, if you have a preference for, or you know someone, or you wish to travel to Mexico, or if you prefer Colombia, or Spain, España, Argentina, depending on what your preference is, maybe you want to pick that specific variation of um, the culture or country that you, you prefer the most. If not, maybe go with a general J, G. <laughs> yes, yeah, so me llamo o me llamo. The next one is ñ, la ñ. La ñ is very distinctive of the Spanish language and it will be similar to that ñ, that ing sound that we have in English. Por ejemplo, mañana, mañana, baño, baño. Okay, uh, it's very important that you pronounce it. The next one, which we have already sort of touched upon, is a uh, Y, yes? La Y, Y, which literally means the Greek I in Spanish. And like I was saying, for example, in, Span in Argentina, where I'm from, it's very common uh, in, in Buenos Aires to say yo, yes, or yerba for, um, you know, the specific um, Argentinian tea that we drink is called yerba and it has a Y, a Y, so that's why we say yerba. But I am from Cordoba and I think the Cordoba accent is a little bit more like a normal or neutral. Uh, they also use it like that in, in Colombia and other uh, parts of Latin America and it's more like yerba or yo. Yes, but it also, some people pronounce it as yo or yerba. The next one is, I'm sure your friend, if you have met before, if not, let me introduce you to la R or R. Yes, R or R. So this is the R. Okay, and this letter gives a little bit of a headache to most Spanish students because it's trilled. Yes, we have that trill sound. And if you think about it, it sounds like a Scottish R. So if you, have, if you want to think about a Scottish person, maybe um, you can see the, the, the R, how it's, it's done in Spanish. But um, it's not always trilled, okay? I'll show you how to trill it in a second. Um, so what you have to do is you, put a, you have to open your mouth yeah, it, the sound doesn't come through uh, from your throat, it comes from your mouth, yes? From the tongue moving against the palate at the top and that's what pronounces the sound, not from a guttural or a, you know, like a throat uh, sound, as for example in French or other languages. Uh, okay, I'm, I don't speak French, so I'm just guessing that's what it sounds like to me. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's have a look at this one, yes? R. Look, if I stop my, my tongue for a bit, I just, the sound doesn't come out. So you need to let the, the tongue be really soft, like tilt it against the palate like this, and let the air flow and do this motion against the palate. That's what creates a R. It's kind of like a purring, like a car, a cat. Okay, okay, so it's important that you try because sometimes you will change the meaning of a word and you will sound very natural if you actually even try to do it, even if you think that you can't pronounce it. Okay, so let's have a look when it's real and when it's not. It's not trilled, sorry, it is trilled, let's start with the trilled, uh, at the beginning of a word. For example, rápido, rápido, okay? Fast, rápido. And it's also trilled when you have it in a double R, doble R or doble R, okay? Por ejemplo, perro, perro, o carro, carro. You see, you have that double R in the middle of a word. But it's not trilled if it is uh, only one R in the middle of a word, for example, pero, pero, caro, caro. 
and it's not trill when it's at the end of a word. For example, amor, comer. Amor, comer. Okay? So if it is at the end of the word, not trilled. If it's only one R in the middle, not trilled. If it is one R at the beginning, trilled. Two double R's, two R's uh, in the middle, trilled. Okay? Uh, and look how important it is to pr try to, pr at least try to pronounce it because you're either saying dog or bad, yeah? Perro, pero, or you're saying car or, or, or expensive, yes? Carro, e uh, expensive. Carro o caro, yes, expensive. So it is important, um, of course the context will help you get your message across, but it's, uh, you will save the, the, the Spanish speaker time of trying to figure out what you're trying to say if you just say it perfectly fine. It will be way easier for you to be understood. So even if you try, and I know it's, it's frustrating sometimes, even if you go perro, perro, uh, Perro, right? If you try to make the emphasis, try to make an effort, it will still sound like you're trying to say dog and not uh, however. And the last one is zeta. Zeta. The Z. Zeta. So, the Z in Spanish in Latin America, it sounds like an S. Yes, yeah, so I'm not, I'm not sure if you have noticed this, but for example, in Latin America, for shoe, we say zapato. Zapato. Okay, zapato. But in Spain, they they have it, they pronounce it differently, and then the Z will be pronounced by putting your tongue in between uh, your teeth, and it will sound something like, I'm not from Spain, so obviously, please give me, cut me some slack here, <laughs> but it's something like zapato, 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 okay? Uh, I know that they pronounce it as well when there is a C in the middle of a word, um, but that's a, that's a different, it's, it's not related to the Z here, yes? But that is the difference between the Z between Latin America and Spain. All right, just to summarize, let's just practice all the pronunciation of some words that we have learned. Repeat after me. Repite después de mí. Casa. Vela. Barato. Como? Cerca. Cielo. Queso. Quien? Gato. Golf. Gusto. Gente. Gimnasio. Guerra. Guitarra. Hola. Hermana. Me llamo. Mañana, yo, rápido, perro, pero, caro, comer, zapato. Muy bien, muchísimas gracias por ver la clase. Thank you very much for watching today's lesson and I will see you next class. Adiós.